everybody, I'm Martin. And I'm Leanne. Welcome to Cancer Connect. Did you get the message? We are the church and today is the church's birthday, Pentecost Sunday. Well, that was a group from our Sunday congregation joining to bring you one amazing message. We are the church. The church is alive and well. And don't worry, we know the pictures went by a little bit quickly, but at the end you'll be able to go back, freeze frame and laugh, or rather look we mean, at everybody all over again. Shall we take these off now? Um, I think so. And blow out the cake? Ah uh, yeah, let's do that. Well, welcome to Comes a Connect, a Sunday worship service brought to you by the Cambridge Citadel Salvation Army family. We're really glad you've joined us for this special episode where we're celebrating Pentecost, the time when the Holy Spirit came down from heaven to dwell with those first followers of Jesus. That's right. And as we do every week, we have music, readings and prayers brought to you by members of the Kamza family. In this episode, we have our songsters, our adults choir, our worship band and a favourite song from one of our elder couples in the core. Oh, and you might want to stick around to the very end of the video today. Just a heads up. Yeah. Well, in a few moments, our songster leader, Anne, is going to lead us in a special Pentecost prayer. Right now, though, at the start of our worship, we're going to continue the theme of We Are the Church as we join together in singing, Build Your Kingdom Here. Set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in a bay. 
Let's pray together. Loving Creator God, we worship and praise you for all that you are and all you've done. Lord Jesus, we worship and praise you that you have found us, forgiven us and given us a place in your church. Holy Spirit, we worship you and praise you that you have renewed us and blessed us with your gifts. Lord, you've given us so much and yet we give you very little in return. Help us to be generous with what we have. Forgive us if we've become so busy and so wound up in our lives that we've forgotten you. Help us to realise how quickly we can become complacent and how far we fall short of your will for us. As we continue in prayer, I want you all to imagine that you can see right through your walls to the people and places beyond where you are. What and who is beyond the walls in front of you? Who might need your prayers right now? What might need your prayers? Please pray for them quietly in your own home. And now, who and what is beyond the walls that are behind you? Again, please pray for them now. Lord, hear our prayers. We bring before you, Lord, all those who are grieving, those who are unwell and needing care, those who are deeply affected by our current situation, isolation, financial difficulties, stresses and strains. May they feel the warmth and support of your love and of the prayers that surround them right now. Today, we celebrate the birth of the Christian Church. I'd like to share with you a prayer for Pentecost from the Iona community. Please join me at the end of each segment with the words that appear here. Spirit of God, flickering over our heads, illuminating our faces, inspiring our thoughts, Give us now, we pray, words of joy and praise. Spirit of God, filling our hearts with hope, steadying our nerves with peace, comforting our lives with love. Give us now, we pray, words of joy and praise. Spirit of God, come to us now, surging through the darkness of our lives, sweeping over our weariness so that in this time of Pentecost the sparkling light of faith the rushing wind of hope the joyful sound of praise may echo round the world may echo in the church and find their response in us Spirit of God give us now we pray words of joy and praise Amen. Thank you, Anne, for leading us in prayer. And may we continue to speak words of joy and praise today and in the coming days. There are so many things we can learn from the amazing account of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. Acts was written by Luke, a physician and a follower of Jesus. And it's a key book in the New Testament because it's the only book which tells us how the church started. Well, today, through music and spoken word, we're going to look at the story of the birth of the church from different angles. First, we're going to have some moments for the children. And so here's Oliver, who's going to talk to us all. Good morning, everyone. On this lovely Sunday morning, I have been asked to do the YP story. And I'm going to show you three different things. And I'd like you to see if you can guess what they have in common. So this is the first of our three items, it's a toaster. Now let's see if we can toast some bread. Oh no, we can't. I wonder why that is. Oh no, that light's gone out. Luckily our second item is a lamp, so we can hopefully light up the room again. 
Oh no, it doesn't work. I wonder what the problem was with the lamp. Good thing I've got my third item here, which happens to be a phone. And I can call my granddad, who happens to be an electrician, and see if he knows what the problem is. Let's see if we can call him. Oh no, phone won't turn on. Wonder what the problem is. Ah, what's this? I think I know what the problem was. Have you guessed what the problem was? Let's plug this in and see what happens. And we have light. Look at that, fantastic. Right, well now we know what the problem was. Let's see if we can get this toaster working. Look at that, lovely jubbly. I'll enjoy that later. Now for the phone. We have live. Ah, oh, but I don't think I'll need this phone anymore to call my granddad because we've figured out the problem. Sorry, Papa, I'll call you later. Well, I'm sure now you're all wondering what that had to do with anything, really. But in actual fact, it's Pentecost Sunday. And on Pentecost Sunday, 2000 years ago, the disciples had the very same problem that these three items had. They couldn't do what they needed to do without a little bit of help. In the case of these three items, they needed electricity to solve their problem. But in the case of the disciples, they needed the power of the Holy Spirit. Now I just need you to remember that all you have to do is ask and that same power that flowed through the disciples on that day can flow through you too. Great presentation Ollie, thanks very much. Welcome everyone. It's great that so many people are watching this video each week and last Sunday we achieved a peak of 166 viewers who were watching it live. We hope you get much blessing from it. As you are all aware, the government are relaxing their guidelines on meeting people and the opening of non-essential retail outlets. For now, our charity shop will not be opening as there are so many logistical and safety issues yet to resolve. As the originally planned date looms for moving out of our halls for the refurbishment project, nothing can yet be confirmed because the pandemic has slowed down the whole design and tender process. But our project steering group are meeting again this week, so hopefully we may be able to give some more details and some more definite information in the coming weeks. Many thanks to Major John for organising delivery in the past week of last month's army papers. Please let us know if you haven't received yours yet. For those of you expecting next month's prayer topics, these should be with you during the coming week. There are many in our core family who need prayers and the latest update number 17 from our officers has a list of those people and those situations. It also contains other essential local and national information about the Salvation Army activities and responses during the pandemic. Wednesday at 8 o'clock, CAMSA Connect Sings commences once again in its usual format. Our special guest this week is Yvonne Field, a well-known songwriter for the Salvation Army and also a Cambridge girl. We're looking forward to sharing with Yvonne. Then on Thursday at seven o'clock, Bible study session hosted by Karen continues. Finally, an update on our community response program is that the number of meals prepared and delivered by the whole team is now in excess of three and a half thousand. Funding is still vital to maintain this program. So please continue to give and share details of our Just Giving page. Details on the screen right now. Well, that's enough for me for now, so please join us in the singing of a real Pentecost song, Send the Fire.
Wow, what a great song. That song was written by the founder of the Salvation Army, General William Booth. He wrote only a few songs, but in that one, his energy and conviction to see the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on this movement called the Salvation Army is plain to see. Send the fire today. May that be your prayer as you live your life for God. Yeah, and we say thanks to Norman for bringing us the weekly updates as well. Um, You heard uh, our community response mentioned there in the update. And if you'd like to know more about what we're doing to serve the people of Cambridge during the COVID-19 crisis, just visit justgiving.com where you can read all about our work and make a donation if you wish. Now, Pentecost is about the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the first followers of Jesus and how that miraculous occurrence enabled them to do amazing things in the name of Jesus Christ. And of course, the Holy Spirit's still at work in the world today and in the hearts of believers. And we haven't had many testimonies on Kamsa Connect so far. So we thought today, Pentecost Sunday, would be a good day for you to hear one. Well, two, actually. So here to tell us about the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives are Maureen and Mel. I thank God for the Holy Spirit because he is my constant companion. No matter where I am in life, he is always there. Even when I have felt alone, I am always reminded in some way that he is there. The psalmist reflected, where can I go from your spirit? The answer, nowhere. He is my and our constant companion. He's also my guide. When I can't see a way forward in life, in a situation, even in a conversation, the Holy Spirit guides me to the right perspective, the right place, the right word. He guards me from going the wrong way, which I sometimes do, and with gentle reminders guides me to the right path. Always the Holy Spirit is my source of strength. He gives me strength each day to do all that the Lord asks of me. And I've proved that in my life over and over again. When things get tough and I feel I've no strength left, there he is to help me, to keep me going and to be my constant source of strength. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Some years ago, I was privileged to take part in the Salvation Army's musical Spirit, written by Gowans and Larson. The introductory remarks for this said something like, This mighty world-shaking, character-changing force we call the Spirit, who can predict what he will do next? Like a holy hurricane, he scatters our preconceived ideas and blows away their prejudices. Like a fire, he scorches the conscience and inflames the compassions. He will take us where he wants us to go and make us the people he wants us to be. Wow! I guess over the years I have found all these things to be true, though I haven't always been so enthusiastic about being taken where he wants me to go. However, when I have been obedient to his leadings, there has come a deep inner peace and contentment which beats everything. Have you noticed during the days of lockdown how birdsong has become so much more noticeable. First thing in the morning as the dawn chorus strikes up, the robin followed by the blackbird, and then in my experience, the mournful, persistent, even sometimes annoying cooing of the collared doves. Interesting that the Holy Spirit is often depicted as a dove. As I hear the dove's persistent calling, it reminds me of the persistent way in which the Holy Spirit calls me to follow in his way. So I leave you with the words of one of the songs from Spirit. For the tender stirring of the Spirit, who recalled us when we went astray, the persistent spurring of the Spirit, when we hesitated on the way. We adore thee, Heavenly Father, and we thank thee, Heavenly Father, and we praise thee, Heavenly Father, as we pray. Thanks, Mooring and Mel, for your words. It's always wonderful to hear from members of the Cambridge Citadel family here on Kamsa Connect, especially those we perhaps haven't seen for a while. That's right. And we have a special treat this morning as we're able to take you to the home of two of our longest serving members, Doug and Sylvia. Here they are with some greetings for you and to introduce their favourite song. Welcome to Cherry Hinton and to our front garden. Some 18 months ago, my wife and I 
had an accident. And since then, we have not been able to attend the Salvation Army in Cambridge, which has been quite a difficult time for us. But here we are this morning. The Salvation Army has come to our home and to yours. When thinking of a favourite song, there is always one in particular that comes to the forefront. In 1835, F.S. Pierpoint was born in the city of Bath. He then moved away and then returned to Bath when he was 29 years old. And he was mesmerised by that which he saw and heard in the countryside. He put his thoughts a pen and paper and he wrote those beautiful words for the beauty of the earth and the beauty of the sky. I personally think of this as a picture. The hills and the valleys, the trees and the flowers. And then he reminds us of sight. It's difficult to say which is which would be my favourite. I've got so many, but I agree with Doug. This has been his favourite for a very long time. My thought at the moment is how real the fourth verse is for the joy of human love. Never, I don't think, have we seen so much love all around at this, uh, as at this present time. The best has come out in everybody. Um, and for this, we, we give praise to God. verses 1 through to 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven for the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. 
All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit made them. Acts chapter 2, verses 12, 13, and 21. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with them, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews, and all of you live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet John. In the last days, God says, I will pour my spirit on all people. Your sons and those who prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour my spirit on those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will return to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Well, today's story, the story of Pentecost, happened after Jesus had gone up to heaven. His disciples were waiting for what would happen next. They waited and waited because Jesus had promised that he would give them God's power, the power of the Holy Spirit, but he didn't say exactly when. So all the disciples sat in the same house and they were praying and they were waiting together. But then, just while they were in the house together waiting, and even though all the doors and the windows were shut, a great wind started to blow inside the house and it got stronger and stronger. And then Luke tells us they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. The amazing thing was the fire didn't hurt them. Instead, this fire of the Holy Spirit empowered the disciples to do extraordinary things. They stood up in front of a huge crowd of pilgrims and tourists and started telling everyone there about Jesus in all kinds of foreign languages. I'm sure that before that moment, none of the disciples would have known how to count to ten in another language. But visitors from Greece and visitors from Rome heard the disciples speaking to them in their own native language. The miracle was that everybody there got to hear about Jesus and wanted to join the disciples. The Bible tells us that 3,000 people were baptised and this is when the church began. Not a bad day's recruiting. Everything we know now as the church was kick-started by God's Holy Spirit. That day, Pentecost, was the church's birthday. Now the story of Pentecost can help us discover what the power of God's Spirit is like. In Acts chapter 2 we see the Holy Spirit manifested as both wind and fire. And I guess the Holy Spirit is like wind because you can't see the Holy Spirit but you can feel his presence and you can see the effect of his work. And also like wind the movement or the influence of the Holy Spirit can sometimes be very strong or gentle. And the Holy Spirit, like wind, generates energy. He can energise us to do marvellous and sometimes miraculous things for God's kingdom. And then the Holy Spirit is like fire as well, because in the same way that fire can easily spread, the experience of the Holy Spirit is catching. And fire is a powerful form of energy, just like the Holy Spirit. For Jesus' disciples there on that day, the Spirit gave them new energy. They were fired up and ready to do God's work. Well, the word that the Bible uses for spirit is the same word it uses for both wind and breath. And the word spirit gives us words like inspiration, for example. So the Holy Spirit is like God's breath, breathing on us and inspiring us with new energy and strength. The song we're going to listen to next reminds us that God's presence in us and around us is like the air we breathe. In the same way that we need the presence of the air, or the oxygen in the air at least, to breathe and stay alive, we need the presence of God the Holy Spirit to keep us spiritually alive. This morning our prayer is that each of you would know and experience the promised presence of God the Holy Spirit. And this week, whether you find yourself on the mountaintop or in the valley, remember that God 
by his spirit can be with you just as Jesus promised. You just need to reach out to God, ask for a new start and pray, come Holy Spirit and be part of my life. So join me in praying, God, Father, Son and Spirit, draw me near, close to your heart. Prophet Isaiah reminds us, do not be afraid, I am with you, I am your God, let nothing terrify you, I will make you strong and help you, I will protect you and save you. Lord help us remember that in times of need, uncertainty and desperation, your promise to us never wavers.
Well, we thank you for joining with us today. We hope you enjoyed that beautiful song by the Songsters and we'll come back again next week for Kamsa Connect when we'll be thinking about the importance of fellowship and community as we join with Christians everywhere in celebrating Trinity Sunday. And as always, we say thanks to the fantastic Cambridge Citadel family for making Kamsa Connect possible each week. Well, we'll have our final song in a second, and it's a song that challenges us all to receive God's Spirit and with his help live our lives differently. But for now, remember, we are the church and we're here to help you and serve you every day of the week. And maybe there's a place for you in this church or in a church near you. So until next week, it's goodbye from us. Remember to keep safe, keep well. And keep connected. God God bless you.
This is the most surreal thing. What? Three, two, one. Ready? <laughs> wait, wait. wait. <laughs> It was Which the day. No, do it again. Ah, okay. oh, the, the church. church. <laughs> <laughs> You're still recording. It's it what? <laughs> still can't do it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we oh, are the <laughs> church. In, In one place. Sit it down again. <laughs> Don't we Pentecost. What you say? Pe Pentecost. Go again. Pentecost. Yeah, that's the word. It's, it's worse the day. Pentecost. Pentecost. <laughs> we, we are the church. church. We, we are the church. church. Let's have a we have a church. Stand. Standing. Standing. Let's do it again. Was you unified? Yeah, the church. Hey, Amen. Yeah, the church. Amen. What do you reckon? I don't know.